like to call the meeting to order for the appointment of Alliance uh, President of Council seat. Uh, we have this vacancy and we're all quite sad for the reason that we do. Uh, I can tell you my story of John went back to all the way to 1987, I believe it was, or 88. Uh, I was um, representing Stark County Council of Governments in Jackson Township and I met at that time, a young man named John Benicast. And he became uh, a good friend of mine, and we worked on many regional projects together for the Star County Council of Governments. Um, he actually helped push, I think it was the only township trustee that was ever elected to the president of Star County Council of Governments. It's always went back and forth from the city to the county, and uh, John was one of the supporters of thought, you know, it doesn't always have to be the county and the city. And, and John helped lead the way. And I served for a few years, and quite frankly, he taught me a lot um, about regionalization and about alliance. And when it came to campaign time, the guy that I always relied on was John Benicast. I would call John whenever there was a countywide race going on, and he was the person that was always stepping up over there. Uh, he introduced me to, and it's sad to say that he's also gone, Bill Bachman. Mm -hmm. Uh, those two gentlemen were probably as efficient as any two gentlemen I had ever met in my entire life. And, uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to take a moment and have a, a silent prayer for, for both of them. Thank you. Um, also, I was sad part of the story, I was planning this year to give John Benicassa the award for lifetime achievement as a Democrat. That's a tough award to get. Uh, people have to work a long time. If you look at the long list that's on that plaque of people that have gotten it, and uh, unfortunately he passed away before we could present him, but we will present his family uh, with that award this year. Also in attendance, the lifetime, sorry, Democrat of the Year, uh, or a Lifetime Achievement Award, I'm sorry. The female will be Ms. Phillips. Ms. <laughs> so it's an alliance year for a Lifetime <laughs> Achievement, both men and women. Uh, the last good bit of news that I have, and then we'll go on with the procedures here, is uh, we're going to move Democratic headquarters. Some of you have heard we're moving it to uh, Washington Square. The good news about that Oakwood is it's Square. much closer. Uh -huh. Oakwood, Oakwood Square, Square, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I was <laughs> Oakwood Square, uh, which the good news is that's much closer for all of you and from Alliance, I believe. It's more of the geographical center of the entire county, I believe. <coughs> and we're looking forward. It's under construction. We're waiting on our rough uh, construction permit right now. I look forward to be moving in the next couple of weeks. Okay, with that, Debbie, would you please call the roll? And, and let me first explain, I'm sorry. The way this works, if you've sat through any of these with me, you will get your ballot. Uh, the Board of Elections people are here. Uh, they have a certified ballot, well, I should say. We, they're ballots with your names on them. And uh, you will have to sign the ballot and check who you're going to vote for. Okay, I'm going to call the roll. Melvin Young. Jerry Yost. Here. Joshua Brown. Here. Daniel Cherry? Here. Leslie Young? Here. Frank, I'm sorry, Phyllis Phillips? Here. Frank Douglas? Here. Jerry Schroeder? Here. Michael McGrath? Here. Stephen Oakey? Here. Kathleen Clunk? Here. Harold Williams? Here. Eric Lloyd? Here. Tom Ryan. Here. Faith Collins. Here. That's 14 present, out of 15. Okay, it will be a majority of those present, so it will take eight votes to win this. Um, if we have a tie, we will re-vote. Sue, so you called and asked that question. I had to look it up. Well, actually, I had Jeanette look it up. It's kind of funny. If it's a tie at the Board of Elections, you toss a coin after a recount, but not under this provision. We go until we come out with it. Somebody comes out with eight votes. I'm going to allow everybody to try to stick to five minutes. I know 
politicians like to go for a while, for five minutes, we try to hold you to so we can get you out of here as soon as we can. Um, I'm going to go by the order of those that came in. Turned out to be the same in alphabetical order, I believe, of the applicants. Uh, you can address them for five minutes, then the ballots will be passed out, you guys will cast your votes. Our first candidate is Keith Avery. Keith? Good evening. My name is Keith Avery. Want to come up? Okay. Okay. Good evening. My name is Keith Avery, and I am seeking the vacant president council seat. I am a 20-year retired Navy veteran of the United States Navy. I have uh, a vast background in government and military policies and procedures. I also have a strong leadership and management experience. If I am uh, appointed to the president council seat, I will bring the same honor, courage, and integrity that I used in the United States Navy. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. The next candidate is Sue Ryan. Hi. Um, glad everybody could come out this afternoon. Um, you all have read, looked at the resumes, and those of you who have known, um, know of my service and and, um, and what I what I stand for. Um, in case you don't know, um, I served my fourth term on council and uh, currently also as president pro tem council. On, as a member of council, I've served on six of the seven standing committees, so I have a broad knowledge of, of things that, that go on. Um, now, since you, you've looked at my resume and you know and see you know, reasons that you know, um, I should I like to be a um, selected. Um, I, I'm going to address a few things that have come up, come up lately that um, make people wonder if I should be council president. And I, I know there was some speculation because of the uh, what happened at the meeting, the class council meeting, uh, Larry Doherty's actions. Um, someone asked if, I, if we worked together and planned that. No. Uh, and other times when I've been able to work with uh, members of council, Democrats and Republicans, I've, it's been rumored that I work too closely with Republicans and maybe I'm a Republican, planned Republican spy. <coughs> now, anyone who knows me knows that that is absolutely absurd. However, that does put me in some good company because there were times when both John Benacassa and Bill Bachman were accused of being uh, Republican plans or secret Republicans because of their uh, close relationship, working relationship with, with the other party. Uh, you, know, when, you know, when I think about that, you know, I think of the Tea Party, how um, really you know, disgusting, for lack of a better word, when we see uh, Dem or Republicans who are willing to work with the President or work with, with Democrats in Congress and automatically they're labeled as rhinos and, you know, they're not you know, pure enough to be real Republicans. So when people think that because you work with the other party that you're less than a true Democrat, then um, that puts you in, I think, in that same cat puts those people in the same category. Uh, in order to get anything accomplished on council, we have to work together regardless of party. We don't have time. Our citizens definitely don't have the patience to become down, become bogged down in partisanship. John Bannon Castle always said that the campaigns end and oaths when and campaigns end and oaths are taken and then partis partisanship ends. Nothing is accomplished when the primary purpose is to beat the other guy, embarrass a colleague, or make a political opponent look bad. Um, I'm a fervent and strong Democrat and my background reflects this. I don't believe that disagreeing with someone on political philosophy means you can't form a productive working relationship. The issues that are facing Alliance at this time won't allow for anything other than a unified approach to governance. I don't mean a rubber stamp, but respect for intolerance of other points of view. Another thing that I've heard recently 
is that I'm naive when it comes to the ways of politics. Now, I'm, I'm sure this is true to a certain extent. Um, however, I would prefer to be reg regarded as an idealist. Somehow, I can't shake the notion that honesty and integrity will ultimately triumph over political maneuvering. I'm not, and never have been, and anybody who knows me knows that I'm not a politician. My purpose is public service. Now, obviously, being in politics is a mean to that end, but um, you know, I'm not, I, 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 I can't get into the, the partisanship and the things that go along with it. And um, <coughs> you know, if, that, if that's a problem, you know, so be it, but that's the way I am. I couldn't be any, any different. Uh, also, and I think this is really humorous, uh, my ability to be able to maintain order and discipline in council has been questioned. Um, I don't know, is it because of my height, my demeanor, or is it because I'm a woman? Um, now, no one knows more than I do that I don't project a strong image. Um, you know, people might, people might think I'm a pushover. However, I've uh, successfully run two schools and I've had to deal with unhappy and sometimes irate parents and always came out on top or at least surviving. I've also managed classrooms with 30 or more five-year-olds and if I can do that, I can handle a council meeting. Um, so anyway, um, there is one thing I do want to point out and I don't know, might be, might be an incentive for some, maybe not for others, but, uh, and it has been mention, mentioned in the newspaper that the city council presidency has never been held by a woman. Now, I know this is uh, you know, maybe a minor point, but you know, it's something to be considered. You know, I made a little crack in the glass ceiling by being uh, appointed president pro tem, and maybe we can just uh, deepen that crack a little bit. Um, and, and I wouldn't be honest with you if I didn't say that that was exciting. You know, that would be an, an honor that I would like to have. Um, this is a time right now of transition on city council and in alliance. We have to face our challenges head on, and it is vital that we have someone who's demonstrated an ability and willingness to work across party lines and who has the respect of other council members as well as that of the administration. The well-being of our city is at stake. Uh, please allow me to <coughs> continue as president of the city council. And in so doing, I would be honored to serve in John's seat and promote and uh, maintain his legacy of bipartisanship, cooperation, and integrity. Thank you. I know Sue, we were talking about parents. I had just a funny story. A football coach told me one time the best place to coach is in an orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> our, our last, I should say, our third candidate, Steve Oak. I've learned in courtrooms that being my height, I usually have to stand farther back. <laughs> so. Although I'm going to be back behind the table, I'd prefer not to have something in front of me. I'm proud to be part of a political party where the aspirants for a position as important as city council president are a African American Navy veteran, a woman teacher, and I guess that makes me the, the, just a really tall guy. Uh, so we have diversity in the applicants to our position, and no matter how you vote, it makes me feel very proud to be a Democrat this evening. Um, I'm Steve Oakey, and I appreciate your service as members of the Central Committee, and I thank uh, the members of Labor who were here earlier and for their support, and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about my experience and uh, what's required of a City Council President, and also what my commitments are to you. But before I do that, I want to thank Keith, I want to thank Sue for throwing their hats into this process, and uh, it's, it's an important process for our city. First of all, my experience. I chose to make Alliance my home 20 years ago, and uh, beginning in 2005, I started pouring a tremendous amount of effort 
and energy and funds into our local candidates, our local Democratic club. And we took a one-six minority when Miss Phyllis was the only Democrat on the council, and we turned that into a five-two majority. Yes, we did. And something we were very proud of. And we got a lot of work done. Sue and I went on the council together at that time. And um, I served six years as a councilman at large, all six years chairman of the finance committee. For those years, President Pro Tem under President John Bennett Castle. I did this while continuing my work as a courtroom lawyer, which I've now done for over 26 years throughout Ohio, working for working women and men, and children and seniors and small business owners. Those are my clients. Uh, when uh, my term of office ended in 2012, I really have devoted uh, countless hours working with the county Democratic Party, working with and for the county Democratic Party. For instance, when uh, the Republicans tried to have the only African American who's ever served on the Stark County Board of Elections removed from office, I defended him at no charge and probably so, and uh, we kept Demetrius St. John on that day. And uh, when uh, they sued the Central Committee and our Chairman Randy Gonzalez in the Ohio Supreme Court, I defended them with no charge, and uh, we won. And, uh, yes. uh, since uh, that time I've, that I've left office in 2012, I've also supported my brother uh, Democrats, my sister Democrats, in their efforts by having I've supported them financially. I've held fundraisers in my home for them, including my friend Sue Ryan, when she was running for state representative. I believe in our us Democrats, and that we have to stick together. I'm also serving as president of Coming Together Stark County, which is the, the only nonprofit organization in the county with a mission of promoting inclusion and diversity in our county. And that's, that, that's the only organization like it in the county. And uh, those are democratic ideals. And uh, I, I recount that experience, my friends, because um, experience is so important mm -hmm. for the job of city council president mm -hmm. because it, it involves much more than just presiding over two meetings a month. That's right. A good city council president has to be an experienced and strong and confident voice of leadership in the community, not just in council chambers, but in the community. Somebody's not afraid to stand up and, and fight for what's right, stand up for our democratic ideals. Uh, someone with the ability and the courage to speak out, even if it's not popular, <coughs> to speak out for what's right in our system of government and what's right under the law. And I respectfully believe that my experience has prepared me not just to hold the office of council president, but also to serve in that capacity as a community leader and to do my very best to represent capably our party and most importantly the citizens of the City of Alliance. And, and to serve as a leadership uh, capacity on behalf of our entire city, whether you're Republican, Democrat, or Independent. And I firmly <coughs> believe that. I sat on city council for six years. Sue's right. Nothing gets done if you don't have cooperation. And the current mayor, who I ran against, Alan Andriani, who's a Republican, <coughs> he and I sat side by side for six years on, I lost count of the number of committee meetings. He and I never had a crossword. We didn't always see eye to eye. But we always work together cordially, and that's the same attitude and approach that I want to bring to serving the city council president. Which brings me to uh, my commitment to you. I have three guiding principles that I, are really important if I am entrusted with the office of president of city council. First is I will never walk away, and I will always look for good faith opportunities to work cooperatively with our, with our Republican friends. Second, I'm never going to be afraid to stand up and fight for what's right. And if any of you know me, you know that to be true. I won't walk away from what's right. And third, all of you work really hard in your jobs and in your lives. And you have my commitment to bring that same work ethic to service as city council president if I'm entrusted with this important position. And uh, that's why I ask for your support this evening. Again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you for being a part of this important decision. Thank you. Okay.
Uh, we're going to pass out the ballots. Uh, Brian, do you want to I mean, do that? You want to come over there? You want to pass them out? Why don't you just pass them out? Okay. Faith, help you. Give me a pen. Okay. Okay. Uh, you need a pen? Uh, yes. Thank you. No, I don't. Harold Williams. Kathleen Clunk. We have to sign these, right? Yes. They have to be signed or they won't be counted. Michael McGrath. Jerry. Jerry Frank. Jerry Frank. something quite clear. It starts at our national level, the Republican Party, to our state level, to our level. And the theory behind that, and the Attorney General supports it, and in their opinion support it, is you are literally representing the people of your precinct as a representative. And your vote, and those people you represent, have every right to see how you voted. I think our state legislators, and the, uh, sometimes our state, our uh, Congress people would love to be able to vote and say, oh, I'm not going to tell you how I did it. Unfortunately, that's not how it works in our country. We have been, as long as I've been chairman, every vote has been voted. Thank This is really watching democracy. Don't hang each ass, right? Yeah, don't hang each ass. No backroom meals there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That Tuesday night, watching the video. Oh, boy. I get hanging. Okay, we have a winner. Uh, the winner with eight votes is Stephen Oak. Um, Steve, you want to say? Well, I just um, I appreciate your consideration. It means a lot to me. If you voted for me, thank you. If you didn't vote for me. That's part of the democratic process, and uh, I, I appreciate your time being here, and I promise I'll work just as hard to earn your confidence. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out, and a uh, very rainy night, and, and I will say that the fortunate thing for me, and I think for the Democrats and Alliance, we will have both Susan and Stephen serving over an alliance, and I think that's a big benefit to all of us. Thank you.